Shalom, you're watching Arutz Sheva TV. I'm Yonin Kempinski, and this is our Daily Edition. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sent condolences to the uh, family of Stephen Stolov, the uh, journalist who was beheaded by the Islamic State terrorists. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke at an event commemorating 40 years for the Yamam Special Unit. I would like to send Stephen Sotlov who was killed in the United States by Daesh. Stephen was killed כי הוא יבא עבור המחבלים, עבור המרצחים הללו, סמל של המערב. אותה תרבות שהאסלאם הקיצוני מבקש להכחיד, ולא במקרה האסלאם הקיצוני רואה בישראל את השטן הקטן ובארצות הברית את השטן הגדול וכל מה שבתווך גם הוא שטן בעיניו. הוא רואה בה, בישראל ובארצות הברית ובעולם החופשי שותפים לדמוקרטיה, לליברליות, ערכים שהוא רוצה להעביר מן העולם. אני חושב שיש התחלה של התפכחות מסוימת. אני רואה ניצנים של תפיסה חדשה ורבים בעולם מבינים היום טוב מבעבר שהאיומים על ישראל הם אותם איומים עליהם ומי שלא יעצור איומים אלה באיבם ימצא אותם בסופו של דבר אצלו בתוך הבית ולכן על העולם להתלכד ולהתאחד מול הטרור המסוכן הזה מפקדי היחידות המקבילות בארצות אחרות אורחינו מחו"ל Welcome to all of you. You know, more than anyone else, that we are fighting the same battle against the same enemies for the same values. Following the murder of the two American journalists and the threat to murder another journalist, this time a British one, uh, British Prime Minister Cameron uh, spoke and made it clear that he will not negotiate with terrorists and he will not pay any ransom. Well, I know it is difficult to hear and I've thought about this very carefully, but I'm absolutely convinced that the policy of not paying uh, ransoms to terrorists for kidnaps is right. And I'm in no doubt that those countries that have allowed ransoms to be paid, that has ended up with terrorist groups, including this terrorist group, having tens of millions of dollars that they can spend on kidnapping other hostages, on preparing terrorist plots, including against us here in the United Kingdom, and in buying arms and weapons to wreak havoc. So I'm absolutely certain it is the right policy. But I would agree with what lies behind your question, which is that if we have that policy, and we should try to ensure others have that policy, and I got world leaders to sign up to that at the G8 summit uh, in Northern Ireland. If we have that policy, we should also make sure we do everything we can uh, to help British people when they're taken hostage. Since becoming Prime Minister, I have ordered a number of hostage rescues in different parts of the world, and as I think people know, uh, there was a hostage rescue attempt uh, in, in this case as well. Sadly, not successful. So it is a desperately difficult situation. We shouldn't pay pay ransoms to terrorists. We shouldn't let terrorists change our policy or our approach to this appalling problem of ISIS in Iraq and Syria. We need to show real resolve and determination. We need to use every power and everything we have in our armory with our allies, with those on the ground, to make sure we absolutely do all we can to squeeze this dreadful organization out of existence. And the United States is deeply concerned. What are they deeply concerned about? the authorization to uh, register around 4,000 dunams in Gush Etzion as state land. The United States UN Ambassador Samantha Power spoke with journalists yesterday. The U.S. position on settlement activity is very well known. Uh, we have long made clear our opposition to settlement activity. Um, we're deeply concerned by the reports uh, of expanded settlement activity over the last few days. 
uh, and we call on the government of Israel to reverse uh, its decision. I think that these actions uh, are contrary to Israel's stated goal uh, of achieving uh, a permanent status agreement with uh, the Palestinians. Residents of the Shimon gathered today at the entrance to Ariel to protest against a new phenomenon, what they define a danger. PA Arabs traveling in the masses on the local buses. The residents fear that this could lead to terrorism or hostile infiltration into Jewish communities. My message is very simple. The Palestinians worker that lived in the authority of Palestine that go to work in Israel from the same passage that they move in the morning and stamp their passport, they need to go back. This need to stop. This that the Palestinians, when they go back in the morning, can come back in every way without security, without nobody to check them. This thing need to stop. So what do you say to people who say this is a racist? You're basically saying you don't want Arabs on your buses. This is not racist. If it's racist, so the meaning is that every tourist from all over the world that uh, come in through Ben Gurion Airport and sign his passport when he's coming and when he's go out, this is racist too. There is no chance, that, uh, no difference between those people. Those people are not citizens of the Israeli, and they are uh, visitors. We allow them to come. We check them when they come in. We need to check them when they come out. And I said come out like this because all of this is land of Israel. My demand is to stop them to drive on buses without nobody check them, not to make checks when they go on on buses. If it's not so dangerous and if everything is open, why not to why to leave them through passage to stamp? Why not to make their uh, uh, security check? If the authorities say that when they go to Israel they need to be checked, it means that when they come back with all them tools, with knives, with the hammers, they need to be checked. And more than this, the situation is that they're doing a lot of uh, danger in the buses. The kids, the students, they are afraid to go because of the humiliation, because of the curse, because of the touch. And this needs to stop. Shemitah, the sabbatical year is near and the preparations on the field are underway. Uh, we met the director of the Religious Affairs Ministry, who is uh, going around the fields, speaking with the farmers, and preparing for the Shemitah. Shalom to Elchanan Glad, General Director of the uh, Ministry for Religious Affairs. Shalom, and I'm happy to be with you in Arucheva. So we're preparing uh, for the Shemitah, the sabbatical year where uh, Jews uh, don't uh, work the land, a year which is like uh, the Shabbat, but for the land, the land of Israel, and you're out here on the field preparing. Exactly, and it's very, very uh, impressive to see the real uh, agriculture in, in Dinat Israel, to see how beautiful the uh, fruits are ready for in the summer for the coming year. And we are, and especially we're getting ready, f not only for the kashrut in all the fields, but here for Shnat Shemitah, getting ready for the needs of, for all the uh, fields for Shnat Shemitah. So tell us what basically are you doing? I understand you're uh, sending uh, people all over to explain, to explain to the uh, farmers what this is all about and what could and should be done. We're giving all, all the workers here in the agriculture field the different uh, possibilities to get ready for Shnat Shemitah, if it's through Heiter Mechira, if it's through Otsar Bedin, different possibilities to keep uh, kosher fruits, vegetables for the next year. We're very happy to see that this year we did a special thing because we sent a special staff to meet these people in their fields and to explain all their needs. We're, ex we're very, very happy to see how they accept us in a very nice and happy way. And I think it's very special to see the uh, working together between the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Religious uh, Affairs. I think together we'll get ready for our next beautiful Shnat Shemitah for all the residents of Medinat Israel. And I can, of course, uh, invite all our uh, Tayarim, all our tourists to come and visit us in the next touch be in Israel. Now you're uh, the general director of the ministry, uh, lots of uh, practical issues, legislations, uh, paperwork, but now you're here uh, being involved in this important mitzvah, uh, mitzvah by the way, which is of course only in the land of Israel, mitzvah once every seven years. How, how's it feeling to be part of this? You visit the fields here of Medinat Israel and you see how the special bracha, we got this uh, this year is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, directly I feel for the beautiful blossom of Medinat Israel, fruit, vegetables, uh, we have 
all the possibilities to give the answer for the citizens of Medinat Israel. Getting ready for Shnat Shemitah give, gives us a lot of uh, strength for the, what's happening in the next six years afterwards when our uh, uh, people work the land of Israel, see the fruits of Israel, and we have to wait and be happy that we have the schut to be part of this uh, miracle of Medinat Israel in these years. Elchanan Glatt, Minister. Elchanan Glatt, General Director of the Ministry for Religious Affairs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that'll be all for today's edition. We'll be back next week with more. Until then, from all of us here at Arutz Shev, Israel, National News .com, Shabbat Shalom.